Hi guys and welcome to another edition of the Next Generation Podcast Show where we will be talking about all the latest gaming and movie news out this past week. First of all, I'd like to introduce to my left, T Fizzle. So, let's give you a brief uh, description about who I am. Like Pop Boss said, I'm T Fizzle. I uh, just got a little YouTube channel, do mainly Call of Duty, GTA, and thanks for having me on the show. And also joining us today is Jose. Hello, my name is Jose, a.k.a. Mega Man NG, and I really am excited to be part of this podcast. I really am. And what I can say is that I hope this gets fun. And also joining today on the show is Black Feline. Okay, the name's Black Feline. I'm big on the games, big on some movies. I will play almost anything, <laughs> especially if they're, <laughs> they're bad. All right, so let's get into it. The official title, cast, and first poster for the upcoming James Bond film were revealed. The title of the film is Spectre, prefacing the classic terrorist organization which has been a mainstay in the James Bond film over the years. Returning to the cast are Ben Winslow, Naomi Harris, Ray Finders, Daniel Craig, and also new to the cast are previously rumoured Dave Bautista from Guardians of the Galaxy, playing Mr. Hinks and two-time Academy Award winner uh, Christoph Waltz. The project is described like this. A scripted message from James Bond's past sends him on a trail to uncover a sinister organisation while M battles political forces to keep the Secret Service alive. Bond peels away the layers of deceit to reveal the terrible truth behind Spectra. And Spectra will hit theatres on November 6th. T. Fizzle, what do you think? Honestly, from the trailer, like... It seemed pretty cool, especially the car that they decided to use for the movie. I believe it's an Aston Martin. And from what I've heard, they tend to switch up vehicles every movie. So yeah. the vehicle they decided to choose for this one, I thought it looked pretty cool. And characters, I'm always interested to see what technology they bring into the movie. Because spy movies like this, it's always really cool to see the different technologies as the especially in the James Bond series, as that series progresses. Yeah, they're, they're bringing a lot of these uh, new gadgets every um, year, don't they? Every time they make a new James Bond film. And uh, that's the kind of one thing that I look forward to seeing as well. Like, what can they bring next to bring it up a notch, you know? I am really looking forward to Spectre, because I've seen all the other James Bond reboot movies, Casino Royale, Quantum of Solace, and I forgot the other one. Skyfall. Yeah, Skyfall. I love them all, especially Skyfall. And with Spectre and they having all these big actors, it's going to be a really interesting, really interesting to say the least. So it's going to be really interesting. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think, I think the addition of Dave Bautista, I, thought, um, I think he could be a, a very good villain if, if he is actually playing a villain. I'm not actually quite sure yet. If I'm... he does play a villain, he will, be, he will, he will mail it. He will yeah. mail it personally. I yeah. think he would, rather than just a, a good guy kind of character that he'll be playing like in most movies um i don't think he is um a, a top actor at the moment he's just a standard for me he's not showing anything outstanding as like the other previous characters especially like a two-time academy award winner christoph waltz who is like an amazing actor i think i really need to probably get back into the uh the uh bond stuff because really i think the only the last bond movie i've seen was actually i think die another day and that was a long time ago oh that was that is a long time ago <laughs> Although I might just go ahead and see this one, uh, judging from what you've all said about it, I just want to see what some of the crazy stuff they come up with in this game when it comes to their gadgets and whatnot. Yeah, I do know that James Bond movies t- have a tendency to sort of go over the top with all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Those, yeah, it is. It's one of those things where you know, it's how they're gonna make it even better because they always bring out all these action-packed scenes from the previous films that I've seen, especially like Skyfall, the whole train scene and all that underground blowing up and all that. I thought, it, when I first watched it, I thought it was okay. But then I rewatched it again and I thought, whoa, this is actually a really good film, considering it, the amount of bud- the, the budget cost that they've put into it as well. I thought, I thought it was action packed and it was just the right tone as well. Uh, I'm just more looking forward to the, how the movie's going to be. If it's good, then I know I'm going to watch it, but if not, I'll pass. And one of the things, you know, um, uh, the main female character in the James Bond film is M. I think it's M. I think in, in the in the previous one, Skyfall, they showed that she got shot. I don't know if you guys remember that. I remember. So I don't know if they maybe because they've killed her off. I I think that's what 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 they've done is they've killed her off. So maybe they're gonna plan on bringing someone else new in. Well, let's hope they bring in some. Uh, let's hope so. 
So moving on to the next topic, we've got the first Terminator Genesis trailer that hit the web this week. It's fair to say that we have been very skeptical about it. So uh, what are your guys' first initial thoughts? I don't like it. If I have a say in it, I just really don't because they're really going for the reboot route because they basically just have the idea of the original Terminator, but then they add a twist. And it's like a major slap in the face. To say I didn't like it is an understatement. It really is. Really? I, I'm opposite of you. I thought it was actually really good. I thought, um, it is, but I feel that the acting choices they brought for it really isn't a convincing. Don't get me wrong. I did like seeing Arnold Schwarzenegger again. It really was nice. Yeah, to see him. yeah it was a nice touch. But I, thought, I, thought, yeah, um, I was slightly confused on the storyline. Like uh, the whole going back to the future thing. It was just like really confusing for me to keep up with. That's it's probably kind of, cause they're I, kind of doing the same with um, back, Days of Future Past X-Men. They've gone back in time. I think they're trying to go back in time to correct all those mishaps. and all. The only lousy thing they ever did was Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines. That's what I mean, yeah. I thought it was pretty, I thought it was pretty good trailer. I mean, I, I didn't like the one-liners, like, I don't know, I will be back. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of lousy. Yeah, yeah it was I thought it was kind of cheesy, that was. And, oh, get in the car before we go, you know, all this and all that. I, I thought it was a bit <laughs> too silly at times, but I thought it was pretty overall good. Look pretty action packed, like especially the uh, the animation with kind of like the jail like substance, like when they transform and stuff like that. It looked pretty good to me. Yeah, one it actually did look a bit better. One thing I did like was the I don't know what the name of the previous uh, Terminator. I think it's Terminator Two Thousand or something. I don't know where you know it's all silver and it transforms all silver. They showed them um, a very similar one in this movie in this trailer. I don't know if you guys noticed that. Yeah, the Asian guy, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. I thought he looked very similar to the guy who played in the... Was it the second Terminator? I don't think I can't Which remember. one? The second Terminator movie? Terminator 2 Judgment Day? Yeah, I think... Robert that. Patrick! Yeah, I think it's Yeah, because he, he did a pretty good job as the T-1000. He actually felt threatening. I can't really remember the, the first two trans, uh, Terminators. It's been a while since I've actually watched it, but... I might actually might go back and watch it now. I don't know what to think of it. On one hand, I want to see it, and on the other, I'm just like, do I really? Yeah, it's just one of those things where I think um, I wasn't really that excited about it when I, when they first announced that they're actually going to do a, a Terminator 4. But after seeing the trailer, I'm still the same. I'm like, it's not that much to excite me, but it's not that much to make me feel a bit less less excited as well. Uh huh. In the you know, it's just like a normal good action trailer to me. Yeah, same. But um, I'm hoping if they show more in time that I will grow fonder and fonder of it. So hopefully we'll we'll see. Who knows? We'll see. I mean, the one actor I don't like there is uh, Jai Courtney, who appears to be like maybe the main character who goes back in time to face the Terminator. Is that and also the uh, the guy that turned into gel he used to give me nightmares when I was a kid. So that's probably one thing. I'm I'm sorry. He used to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice um? One very cool thing about this trailer was they showed a young Arnold Schwarzenegger and an old version of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, that, that. that appeared to have, be a face-off. Maybe when they go back in time, is is there the the older older version with a shotgun about to blow his brains out or something? That looked pretty good. And then the ending scene <laughs> where he jumps out of the plane and it goes through through one of the jets. I thought that was pretty good as well. Nice touch. Yeah, it was pretty good. It's now official. Warner Brothers has officially announced the cast for the upcoming DC adaptation, Suicide Squad. Based on the DC comic book, the story centers on a team of supervillains who are given a chance at redemption by the government. The film will star Gerard Leto, by the Dallas Club, as a Joker, Will Smith as Deadshot, Tom Hardy <laughs> as Night Rises, and upcoming Mad Max Fury Road as Rick Flagg, Margaret Robbie, Wolf of Wall Street as Harley Quinn, Jai Courtney, A Good Day to Die Hard, and upcoming Terminator Genesis as Boomerang, and Cara Delvian as Anna Karen Nina. Previously announced that the film is directed by Fury Homer, David Archie, R. Ari, and Suicide Squad hits movie theaters on August 6, 2016. Uh, to be honest, I'm kind of impartial. I wasn't really too familiar about Suicide Squad prior to this. Like, this is actually kind of like a refresher for me and, like, just finding out from you. So uh, it's kind of, it's all kind of new to me. So 
just hearing the storyline, it sounds pretty interesting, though. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they've really gone all out with the cast here. You know what I mean? They got Will Smith, Tom Hardy. Jack yeah, Hardy, Will Smith, that dick has my attention, though. Yeah, I mean, Will Smith's a really top known actor, so it's really. I'm sure he'd do a really good job in the role as a, a Deadshot, who is like one of the biggest villains in the Batman universe. Um, Will Smith, has he really had played that many villain roles? I don't believe he has, actually. He's I think he's played mainly the protagonist in a lot of movies. Yeah, and, he's, and he appears in a lot of these uh, chick flick romance kind of movies as well, you know, Hitch. Um, I really enjoyed him in uh, I, Robot, but not to get off topic. Yeah, I mean, I enjoyed the iRobot. I mean, lately, his movies haven't been all that good. I've not really enjoyed his movies. I know he did um, that one with his son. Um, was it last year, year before? After Earth. Uh, it, was, it was the one with his son, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that one was yeah. just that bad. I'm forgetting the name of it. Yeah, I forgot it, too. I need to see that. I need to see that list. Because I don't think... I, this is honestly my first time hearing of Suicide Squad. It's not a normal Will Smith movie. is playing who now? <laughs> I can't see it. I'm sorry, but now now I'm curious. It, it, it does look really, it does sound really I good. Do, uh, it does, but I also still can't see it. You never you never know. They might just impress you and surprise you. You never know. I but, already read up info about the Suicide Squad since I saw the movie Batman Assault on Arkham. Oh, yeah. You mentioned that you've, you've seen that. Oh, now yeah, that I've seen. That, okay. Yeah, that gave me a pretty good idea of what the Suicide Squad's are under, all about, under the command of Amanda Waller. Anything else you can tell us about that story? Well, all we know is that they were assigned to find Edward Nigma because he had obtained data on all members of the Suicide Squad, past, present, and future. And basically, things go wrong, Batman gets involved, and in the end, everybody's safe. But this, but Batman considers this, like Amanda Waller a serious threat because of how far she's willing to go. That storyline sounds uh, pretty interesting. Yeah, it is pretty interesting. It's, it's a, it's a storyline that I'm not really familiar with in the Batman. It's, I think it's part of the Batman Arkham universe. Yeah, it's not one that I'm familiar with, but it does sound very interesting. And I'd like to see how it all plays out with the Suicide Squad. Because I don't know if that's um, an actual storyline that they're taking out from one of the comic books, or if it's an entirely new of written in the cinematic universe. So I don't... Well, only time will tell how this plays out. I am I'm curious to see. <laughs> yeah, I'm in, in, interested to see uh, Gerard Lasso playing the Joker, as we haven't seen a Joker since the Dark Knight, and that Joker yeah. was uh, really, really good old Heath Ledger. Yeah, God rest his soul. So um, yeah, that's coming out in 2016. So looking forward to that. I'm sure it's going to be um, a really big well-known hit movie i'm sure when once they release a trailer probably in the middle of 2015 or something i'm sure a lot of people will get buzzing about that film so on to the games portion of the show one of the play one of playstation's experience announcements has arrived a little early as capcom posted a teaser trailer for street fighter 5 coming exclusively to the playstation 4 and pc according to prior comments from Oh no, Street Fighter V is still in early stages of development. The most recent core Street Fighter game was 2009 Street Fighter IV for the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PC. It looks really promising, it really does. Though I feel for some reason I don't seem to be convinced. I don't know why, I just am. Yeah, I mean, it's been a long time since I've uh, played Street Fighter, any of the Street Fighter games, actually. Um, it does. I know. It sounds really exciting, though. I mean, I do like fighting games. Uh, I like Tekken. I like Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat. Those are those type of games I do like. But it's been a long time since I've played any of them. With me, it's kind of weird because, like, I've always really enjoyed playing fight, fighting games, but yeah. for some reason, the combos was never something I could really grasp. Like, I I enjoy the combat. But I could never be that type of gamer that can really memorize combos. Like, once I memorize it, I might have it down for, like, a few games or so, and then I got to go back to the move list and figure yeah, out what this combo was. Exactly the same with me. I was exactly the same. I had to keep looking at the game list and trying to get all the sequences right, you know, the button bashing and all that. Yeah, I think it's really impressive, though, like, in games and Street, Fa Fa Street Fighter, Tekken, and all those other fighting games, Mortal Kombat. When you have those players who are able to put like 10 plus combo hits together, just making their own combos, I always thought that was really entertaining. 
there's not many um these fighting games that are out that are actually a really big hit, are they? I mean, look at the last uh, Street Fighter game is 2009. It's been a long time since we've actually had a, a real proper good fighting game. Apart from like UFC and uh, MMA, they've got their own video games and also uh, WWE. But as far as Street Fighter Five, what do you all think about it being exclusive? Like Xbox isn't in on it. Yeah, I'm sure that's gonna be um, hitting a lot of these. I read, fans. I read so many comments and watched so many videos. That's a lot of stuff I focus on, and it makes me laugh. <laughs> I just like people. I just like, I just like seeing how some people like to whine. I mean, there's one thing when you know you see it and it's like, oh, it's not coming to this. Oh, oh well, I guess I'm not gonna be able to play it, and like you know, just accepting it. Then you get the guys who just go straight irate over it. It makes me laugh. <laughs> yeah. because it's just that's the consequence that. of that uh, Xbox price drop. <laughs> that's what they didn't tell you. The price drops for Xbox, but you're uh, losing out on your games. <laughs> other than that, the game itself did look pretty good, even though I haven't really played a Street Fighter game in a good while. I'm not. I'm not. It's like you guys were saying about the combos and stuff. Couldn't figure it out myself. So that might be a good thing. It's been known like a lot of. The PS3 and old generation, or I don't know if we call it current generation or just old generation now or what we call it, but uh, PS3 and exclusive games turned out pretty good. Most of the PS3 exclusive games were pretty quality, so who knows what going into next gen with this been exclusive to PS4 and PC, we might get an, be getting a lot of content that we really crave, and Street Fighter V might be one example. Yeah, um, it's, it's just really odd that they've not announced it for the Xbox One, but rather than just for the PC. I mean, maybe they could have got a lot more money or a lot more audience for the Xbox, if they did announce it for the Xbox Three, uh, Xbox One. But I say, who knows? It's probably a timed thing. I really don't care too much about timed exclusives. <gasps> what about you, Jose? What do you think? Well, regarding to- regarding this whole Street Fighter Five, I am looking forward to it. I really am. Though I feel that Capcom, I believe, is just whining. To, are, you guys know that Capcom's in trouble, right? They're like, they're like way in the red because they're oh, not yeah, doing so well sales wise. Yeah. So I feel this is basically the one thing they just want to focus on Street Fighter because that's their biggest cash cow. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They really have to step it up though, because I mean, yeah, they really have to. I've heard that they've uh, they're bringing back a few of the characters from the previous Street Fighters. Um, I'm not sure if, uh, which ones they've announced, but I have heard the rumors that there will be quite a few of the popular names from the previous ones. Let's see how it goes. The next topic is Battlefield Hardline. This new story trailer for the game, shown off at the Game Awards in Las Vegas, showcases the game's gritty narrative with some snippets of footage taken from Hardline. Described as a fresh new take on Battlefield that's inspired by great TV crime dramas, Hardline's campaign is aiming to deliver plenty of player choice. I it's, this is an interesting take on it, seeing as you know a lot of, not really a lot of shooters are going for uh, this sort of urban setting. I like how I like how it's going like that. It's it's gathered my uh, it's really gathered my interest quite a bit. I just want to see just how gritty it can get. I remember watched that trailer, saw. Uh, Really exploded uh, stuff that goes on today when it comes to drugs and everything, for one thing. And it gets a tits. Although I will, I am going to wonder if they're going to sort of pull what they did in the multiplayer, which didn't make sense, is how could a bunch of cops and robbers randomly get rocket launchers and stuff? It's like, what? <laughs> That's like a small thing, but still. Yeah. I, I think it looks pretty good. And I'm not exactly too big into the Battlefield series. I mean, I play it, but this one might actually get my attention more for the story reasons. Yeah, I would say the same thing. Like, I'm not, I, as much as I like the trailer, it's just that, well, believe it or not, I'm not convinced on the Battlefield. Because after the failure that was Battlefield 4, makes me wish if they'd learned their lesson. I'm same. I'm same as well. Why, why do you say that? Why do you say that? Well, because of how EA was, like, forcing DICE to keep making the same game every year. And they just need, they couldn't, couldn't they just take their time with the game instead of just rushing it? Yeah, I agree with that as well. I remember when I bought um, a Battlefield 4 last year when I was having some, pro- they're having some, I don't know, server issues or something where every time I tried to play the game, it would not start. And I think quite a lot of people were experiencing the same technical issues as well at the time. And ever since, I have not touched Battlefield 4. I mean, I only played probably 10 20% of the campaign mode. So that really put me off the Battlefield game and I haven't even touched it since. I know they've actually uh, resolved all the issues. Now that it's been over a year now since it came out, the new the new trailer looks pretty pretty good. I mean, 
like uh, Black Feline said, this whole nitty gritty and urban style hasn't been shown before, really. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, in the battlefield um, games, it's always you know some kind of military in general, or even in the case, it's usually just some modern military stuff. Yeah, I mean, the whole crime thing looks pretty good. Yeah, in Battlefield, uh, I didn't really get to get into Battlefield Four. Last Battlefield I had was Battlefield Three, and during that time, the story mode really wasn't that compelling for real. The story mode was just kind of, it was just pretty plain. And then the graphics, I know I didn't get to get to Battlefield 4. I think Battlefield 4, especially next-gen graphics, way better. But uh, when I saw the trailer, it did look interesting seeing, seeing from the perspective of a cop. It kind of makes me wonder. I know, I think, Boss, you're in UK, right? Yep. I don't know about back Black Felon and uh, Jose. But uh, I'm in the U.S., and right now there's been a lot of controversies between uh, cops and uh, and just racial tension. Although, oh, you don't have to remind me about that. Believe me, you don't have to remind me. <laughs> I see a lot in the news. But although Battlefield Harlan isn't doesn't have anything to do with uh, cops and just going against a race or anything like that, it kind of makes me wonder if that's the, uh, the sales are going to be affected by that in the American market. Awesome. Because a lot of people are having a lot of hatred towards cops, and a lot of people are supporting cops. So it's just going to be interesting to see what the numbers are going to look like with a lot of these recent events occurring. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting point that you've um, you've made there. We'll see how that plays out. Yeah, we're not going to go into detail about the events, but I'm pretty sure you all know what's going on. Oh, no, trust me. I, I am a black dude. It's trust me. I do keep an eye on this. And... Uh... It's a real uh, It's not. It's not too personal. It's honestly not that personal for me. I look at the news and I'm like, "Oh wow, these people are freaking out quite a bit." <laughs> On the other hand, I'm like, "Well, it's another another black dude got killed. How are the people going to react now?" I, it may seem messed up, but I'm I'm sorry. Quite a while to feel that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go too much into racial. That's another conversation. Oh yeah. Cool. So the yeah. next topic is um, Red Dead Redemption sequel which is in development for the PS4, Xbox uh, One. Now, this is actually a rumour. It's not actually been confirmed that there is going to be a Red Dead Redemption sequel, but it has been rumoured that someone in, from Rocksteady, Rockman in within the sources, Rockstar is actually making making a sequel. So what do you guys think of that? Normally, when these type of rumours occur, like the first time I'm really getting into believing it is when a picture is released. Like a lot of times when they just say something, it doesn't really phase me at all because it's just he say, she say, she say. Yeah. But when a picture or a screenshot of something is released, that's when my eyebrows are kind of raised and I start looking into it a little bit more. So as far as that goes, probably once some sort of screenshot or something is released, that's when I'll probably it catch my attention a little bit more. But if they could come out with another Red Dead Redemption, that'd be uh, pretty cool. I didn't really get to get back in to the game when the first one came out because I was kind of broke at the time and I didn't get the uh I think there was another version kind of with zombies that they came out with or yeah. something yeah yeah I didn't I never got that either but uh I'll probably get into it if they do release the Red Dead Redemption 2 I heard it was a lot of people in their opinion it was one of the best games for its time it was something it was something different you know yeah <laughs> I think uh, if they do, they really, I think they really should make a se- uh, sequel for it. That was a really good game. When I when I played it, I didn't, I wasn't really that hooked onto it. Um, it was actually my cousin who got me into it. He said, "Go on, check it out. It's a really good game." So I ended up getting a cheap copy on eBay, started playing it for a bit. But it was just riding on a horse and just running around, shooting. It was a standard um, game for me, really. This is like the environment and stuff. I'm big on exploration when it comes in the yeah. games and whatnot, and random events happening, like just being able to go around and, uh, well, how, how did it work? Helping somebody out, we're trying to get stuff back, I guess. You go and fight with a gang or whatnot. I like the fact yeah, that you I'll... go to an animal and you can skin it. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy exploration games. That's probably why I really enjoy GTA Fall. Another thing is also that experience in a game where, uh, it's basically randomness. Like you don't know what to expect every single time. Once I figure out a game and I know what to expect uh, most of the time, that's when it starts to get boring because it's like it's the same thing rehearsed over and over. So if 
they can figure out if it's been created and number two has been created, if they can figure out a way to really uh, highlight the randomness in the game and just have an, a whole bunch of content to constantly be able to do new jobs and stuff. For an example, Destiny, which I haven't got to get, but I've heard like, <laughs> it, Bungie well, does a really good job on keeping new content out. If they can eh. do that, I think it'd be pretty cool. Well, um, I don't know. What, what do you guys want to see new in this? If they do do a sequel to it, what do you guys want to see new? I don't. I, like I think it's to play the first one, so I can't really compare it too much. It's like you said, just a bit more, or some more uh, random events going on, I would say. I would just love, like, just seeing a, um, me want to walk into a, a town getting raided by a gang or something. Would you <laughs> set into a different time timeline? They do it a different timeline? Huh. All right, sorry about that. You want me I to wonder what you, my thoughts? Yeah, I wonder yeah. what timeline would make sense then. Well, what I can say about this whole thing is that <laughs> I'm not all convinced. Boss said it's only a rumor. But what would you like to see that would make it a good game? Rumors are still rumors no matter how you look at it. Yeah, I know that. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying, like, if a Red Dead Redemption 2 was created, what would you like to see that would make you interested in the game? Well, we know that Red Dead Redemption was one of the best games in 2010. And it was truly a great game. Is there anything that they could have improved on? Or is it because no, nothing is completely perfect? Well, I'm not sure. I really am not sure. But like I said, when I played during a time that Red Dead Redemption came out, yeah, I think I think just seeing how many of my friends on my PSN list were playing it all at one time, like pretty much now my friend list is filled with either Advanced Warfare or what other game, GTA 2K15. Those are the main games I see on my friends list. But during that time when Red Dead Redemption was out, like, that was one of those games that I would always see people playing when I hopped online. It was big back then. It was. So it'd be, it'd be no surprise if they do actually confirm that number two is in, is in the works. And to see on the next gen console, I'm sure the graphics would look amazing. Oh, yeah. In which case, if it's just coming for those two systems, PC people are going to be pissed again because the first one didn't go to PC. <laughs> like, what? This one too? God damn it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, as far as graphics, PC has been on top of the game for a long time now. Yeah, they always but, have been. This is a matter of height of what you value most in the terms of gaming. But anyway, there's another topic um, I don't know if you guys want to talk about. Is the new? Um, there's a lot of stuff I don't know about. That's the one. Super Smash Brothers. There's a new one. Coming oh, out. Super Smash Brothers. Okay, I think you said. Uh, Smash Brothers. Yeah, for the Wii U, it's coming out yep. soon. I don't know. If it's oh yeah, out. I heard about it. it came, out. Super Smash Brothers for Wii U. It came out already. It's already. I out. have it. Yeah, it's already out. Do you guys yep. want to talk about that as an extra topic or? I was playing it not too long ago. I just bought Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. I'm sorry. I need to buy. It. I need to play that game. <laughs> there's actually a, a, there's a new code that you can play now. Mewtwo. All right, the whole Mewtwo thing. That now that's an interesting case. It is an interesting case because you need to get both the 3DS and the Wii U version, which I did. Yeah, you need to get you need to get and register both the 3DS and the Wii U versions of the game. So was that like a separate to which, console that you need to get? Then? Was it a separate kind of uh, code or something? Promotional code? Yeah, separate codes. I'm pretty sure because. Two, the two diff- they're still two different platforms to play the stuff on. Uh-huh. How does that work? Which, you have to register both and then one comes on both of the consoles or does it go on or does Mewtwo only come on one console? One, um, I think platform? it's I think it's I think uh, when it goes to the Club Nintendo stuff I think it's going to probably give you a way to down like put them on both I'm not too sure but I really don't care about Mewtwo anyway I would that wasn't my incentive for buying both of the games I bought both of them because I just like Smash Brothers. <laughs> Last time I played Super Smash Brothers, it was like a, a GameCube. It's been a minute. <laughs> but I, I, I've been enjoyed it then. So it also same with like Mario Kart. Like it's been a minute since I played Mario Kart and last time was on GameCube. So at my college, they have a game room. And I went up there, and I completely forgot about Mario Kart. And I saw the new game that they were playing. I think it was on the uh, Nintendo Wii. And it was just crazy seeing the graphics and just how it developed. So, like, once again, another thing, retro thing that I've been a minute since I played that I would love to see. I don't know if I'm actually getting it myself because I don't have a Wii U. But just, like, to watch it on YouTube and stuff like that is still cool experience for me one of my pet one of my pet peeves right now is the whole nintendo franchise as it, as it stands is for me is the fact that they're not really getting bigger they're not really going anywhere with these games 
and we kind of seen the same repetitive stuff coming from Nintendo again and again and again. You know, the Wii U. And I don't. I, I think they're willing to go back to the retro consoles, the way the gaming and the whole experience was, rather than just wrapping around a remote control in the air saying, "Yay, we're getting somewhere." Aren't we? As an as a Nintendo fan, I really don't know what to think of Nintendo nowadays. To me, they make really. I like playing their games. The thing is, I just don't. I just don't personally know what direction they can go into without trying to make themselves seem like these other companies anyway. If you notice, Nintendo still does their own thing. Only thing is, doing their own thing has basically got uh, getting them abandoned by a lot of third parties. On the other hand, you have a third party like Ubisoft who's pumping out an Assassin's Creed game every freaking year. Yeah. So do I really want to play that on a Nintendo console is another thing, too. And as for the way they do their stuff is um, each game that they have that's part of a major franchise usually comes out once per console, I would say. Like, instead of, like I said, like Ubisoft again, who are making a, yet another Assassin's Creed or Call of Duty, like three or four Call of Duties coming out for one console. It's iffy for me, really. I don't know. I just don't. I don't. I, I think they need to go back to the drawing boards of Nintendo and, and, and try and uh, come up with some new, fresh ideas to really get the whole Nintendo on the move again. Because they're really this, right? you got PS4, one of the big names, you've got Xbox One, one of the big names, you've got Nintendo, which is a big name, but it's back right at the bottom of the list. The only problem I see with the with the thing with new IPs is, of course, it's always good to come up with new IPs. Yeah. The problem is, will it be one that people will like? The one big problem. You say people, hey, pump out these new IPs, they make a new IP. Oh, this isn't something I'd buy on a Nintendo console, they need to put it on X, uh, need to put it on X console. It's like, but you told them to make a new one. It's like, yeah, but this is what we wanted. But anyway, let me not go into a whole tirade on that because I'm big on the Nintendo stuff. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Can't blame me on that. Eh, I got nothing. All I know is that I'm looking forward to what's yet to come, and it's going to be good. Believe me. Well, for Super Smash Brothers, it's a fun fighting game, fun game to play. I'm going to be enjoying it every day. Believe me. I, I play the game every day. I always practice by myself. Have you, have you heard of Ambio? I heard of Amiibos. 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 And I heard that Sorry. some Amiibos are being discontinued by Nintendo. The Marth, Wii Fit, and Villager Amiibos. Though I don't know if it's true or not. I just want to buy a Kirby one. Oh, she's so <laughs> cute. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually looking on the eBay to try and see if I can get a really good deal on them. Try and collect them all, because I like collecting stuff like that. You know, little figurines. And I'm expecting an Amiibo from a friend for Christmas. The Marth Amiibo. Ah, which nice. is by far the rarest Amiibo around. Yeah. All right. So, uh, TJ, are you okay? Or just shall we wrap this up then? Yeah, well, we're good. We're good to wrap it up. And that's it, guys. We have run out of time. We hope you enjoyed our show. Don't forget to click on the thumbs up button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Next Gen X, and tell everyone that you know to do the same. I would like to thank our guest, Jose. How um, how can people find you online? You can find me on Mega Man NG on YouTube. I am a YouTuber, a Let's Player, but I'm also very underrated because of how YouTube is and how they screw up people a lot, which stinks. But at least I'm trying my best. <laughs> right. And I'd also like to thank Black Thing. Black Thing, how can people find you online? I have a very tiny YouTube channel right now that I'm more or less doing experiments on because every time I try to record something, it doesn't come out the way I want it. But if I can get it going, fine. You, my YouTube channel is pretty much the same as my name, really, Black Feline. How can people find you online? Uh, pretty much the same thing. I'm a YouTuber like Black Feline and uh, other dudes. I'm sorry, I'm browsing. So I forgot. Um, on YouTube, just hit my 1K subscribers, so always looking to grow and love interacting with my subscribers. Uh, username, same as right here, tthizzle88. Just search me up on YouTube and should be good to go and looking to see you. And also you can find me online on Twitter at NextGenX, Facebook, NextGenX, and also YouTube, NextGenX. Make sure you check out all our channels. Thank you guys for checking our shows. And until next time.